my name is Ainoa. And I am Marta. We facilitated a training course called Growing Minds here in the forest of La Esperanza in Tenerife, Canary Islands, supported by Erasmus Plus Youth Program. We hosted a group of youth workers who came here to explore how to develop and implement activities related to empathic connection between a group and empathic connection between a group and nature. The program included activities supporting community building, mindfulness in nature and empathy-based communication. So now you are going to see participants of the course sharing what they have experienced and what they have learned. So, if you are a youth worker, a youth trainer, a facilitator, an educator who would like to implement similar activities in your work, this video is for you. Enjoy! a group experience, the important part is to build a community and for this we propose an activity which is called community dance and uh, the idea is to uh, for every people to feel uh, like part of a community so each person is important to build a community and uh, we actually think it's good to do it uh, at the beginning of the experience when people start to get to know each other but also in other moments and in the end to really feel the cohesion of the group and to feel you're part of that community together. So for this activity uh, you will need a song, a folk song. Uh, we chose for example uh, the French Britain dance uh, called Autre de Bon but you can choose whatever kind of folk dance you prefer and you will need a, a music box to listen to the music and you have to find a flat and spare space to dance. Uh, it can be indoor or outdoor if you, uh, if you find the correct place. But for this activity, um, you have to stand up. Every, people are um, putting in a line and each people grab the hand of the people um, close to him or her. So right hand is giving, so it's on the top and left hand is receiving, so it's uh, below. And then steps are very easy. You go two steps on the left, one, two, and one step on the right. And then you follow a leader, which has a free hand, so it's not closed circle, and you follow the movement of the leader. It's important that elbows are close to each other. You really feel the contact with the person and uh, be take into account that it's a body contact activity. So some people could be uncomfortable with it. So take this into account. And also it's important to explain it that uh, you don't need to be a good dancer. You just have to follow the rhythm. And it's an activity we really suggest because you really can see that um, even if it's starting uh, like in a maybe not perfect way, in the end you really build a community and all the people are actually uh, moving together and be part of a group. And for this, um, for example, with the following the leader, you can do shape of a spiral. And so just the leader turns on its, in him or herself and people are gathering around. And so you really feel part of a community. And as a final tip, you can of course, follow the guidelines of the leader. Um, he can like uh, suggest you to keep eye contact, to feel it with eyes, the community, but also to close your eyes and feel you're part of the community with other senses, for example, with the movement. And so it's an activity we really loved, and so we suggest you to do it. Mindful eating is bringing all our attention and awareness to the act of eating, making us fully present of that moment. The aim of this activity is to slow down and become aware of the way we eat. It's scientifically proven that this 
has numerous health benefits, like stress reduction and others. Sometimes we hurry through our daily tasks without being fully established in the present moment. Our proposal is to include an activity where we guide youth in a mindful eating session to counter this tendency in modern society. Something as simple and ordinary as eating on apple can bring us great joy. To organize such activity, a facilitator should be present to guide the participants. Choose a quiet place, like a forest, and organize people around a circle. Not a lot of material is necessary for this besides preparing the food and table that can be as simple as a cloth. The facilitator should direct people on where to start eating and first to use all senses. To feel the texture of the apple with the hands, to smell and finally to taste it while reminding everyone to eat slowly. Also very important to keep silence at all times and not less important to try and keep thoughts of outside life like work and other things on hold for now. Ultimately, remember also to tell participants the importance of this session and that the idea is that this should not be seen as something to do once in a while, but instead a tool that they can integrate in their everyday life. The activity we would like to introduce you is called Finding Back Your Tree. And the aim of the activity is to build the trust between the group members. We suggest to do it in the beginning of the project and to last about 30 minutes. What you need to do this activity is a tree and a blindfold. There is no special preparation needed uh, from the group uh, for the implementation of the activity, but the facilitator has to prepare for the debriefing questions that will follow. And first of all, we divide the group into random pairs, and then uh, the pairs agree on who is going to be the blindfolded. They continue, uh, they agree on how they will be moving around. And uh, the next step is that the non-blindfolded person choose a tree for the blindfolded person who has to explore it. And they return, when they finish, they return at the person, uh, at the starting point, and the blindfolded uh, take off the blind and has to open the eyes and try to find the tree back. At the, the continuous, the pair repeats the process by changing the roles. And uh, a deep briefing is the last uh, stage of the activity where the trainer or the facilitator monitors the process by questioning some things uh, to the pairs. We had some recommendations of how to implement this activity uh, differently, maybe. First of all, we need to find a quiet place, uh, ask the group to be mixed as much as possible, uh, repeat at the end of the project, it should be nice, and uh, we recommend to do it in the nature and adapt it accordingly to the place. Some special attention needed, maybe to set the time and the space limits, advise the pairs to work in a safe way, encourage the participants to actively participate even if it's challenging for them, and then uh, leave somebody to take care of them. There are no age limits, it might need some adaptions for participants with special needs. The group raises the sense of community at the end, and it could be used as an icebreaker and a team building activity. We thought that this is a very inspiring activity because it works as a base on which you can build the trust and the relation in the group and you can build the next activities on a stable base. And it's also a reminder activity that you can do without. And it's also a reminder activity that you do not have to do everything alone. We would like to present to you an activity called Broken Telephone which uh, works with body language and communication in general um, and it explores different ways people might uh, show their emotions. So we will now show you uh, how to do it in practice. After this session, a really important part is to ask some debriefing questions. So these might be why did the emotions change from the beginning until the end? Or does this ever happen to you in real life? And then uh, wrapping it up, asking uh, what did you learn from the activity? What can you use in your life possibly? 
this activity can be uh, used um, usually after a group has been built. So it's not a good um, team building activity per se. You get to know the other people, but you mainly get to know uh, yourself. So it's important to include it maybe second or third day of a uh, training. And it is suitable for any target group. So from young children, which will understand it um, quite easily, up to adults or uh, older people. This activity is quite easy to do. Um, One thing we would recommend is asking uh, if people are fine with being touched because it involves uh, touching one another. So this can be a sensitive topic. Um, And to do the activity well, it's important to um, do the the debriefing well. So the debriefing part is really essential. And there you can modify the question based on your target group. So you would ask children a bit differently than adults. Uh, The the most inspiring part of this uh, exercise would be the conversation afterwards. So try and find something exciting in it. And also it's different with uh, each target group so and with actually any group. Can you tell us what you think is this feeling? Is it sadness? Now we're going back to the first person and we ask her what emotion she has. Uh, fear. The aim of this exercise is to explore the boundaries of others and of yourself. It's a good exercise to do during trainings and it's called the stop exercise. The materials that you need are very simple. You only need some blindfolds for the people, for half the people that you are uh, working with and an open space to walk in. Preferably you do this activity outside, somewhere where you can hear people walk uh, because you don't want to be disturbed and you don't want to hear the people standing next to you. To do this exercise, you divide the group into pairs, you line them up and you make sure that there is enough space in between the pairs such that they have the movement to walk. Then one of the pairs takes a blindfold, you move them five meters apart and they slowly walk towards the person who has not blindfolded slowly works towards the person that is blindfolded. Once the person without the blindfold feel comfortable, they will stop and the A person with the blindfold can take the blindfold off to see where they stopped. After that, you redo the exercise, but now the person who is blindfolded will say stop. Again, you take off the blindfold and you see where the person stopped and you can compare the results. The target group for this exercise is for 14 years and above. Uh, That's the age where people normally uh, experience boundaries. Mm -hmm.